This is the new Google Pixel 8 Pro and this is the best Pixel phone yet. Hi everyone, this is JD, your Gadget Review friend. Welcome and welcome back to Gadget Rev now. Pixel 6 Pro and 7 Pro are really good phones and they're extra special because of the price tag. They sat in between mid-range phones and flagship phones. But this year, Google introduces a lot of new features on the new Google Pixel 8 Pro, especially on the camera features on both hardware and software, but they also introduce a new price hike of $100. So with all the good features, is this phone worth it? Let's go to work. First, we will do the unboxing and what's new, but if you'd like to jump to the other parts of the video, I will leave the timestamp on the description below. The new Google Pixel 8 Pro packs a really good hardware and software features that is worthy to be called a flagship phone. Starting with the new processor, the Tensor Chip Gen 3, it is more capable now than the previous processors. The chip handles most of the AI camera features of the new Pixel 8 Pro. It also features more camera improvements, more powerful and upgraded camera systems for better photos and videos. Plus, I feel a lot of game-changing editing tools that you might be able to use in case you screw up your shots or just want to be more artistic. There was a slight change in the design. Pixel 8 Pro now has its matte finish at the back that won't allow fingerprint smudges and the camera module is now a big pill shape that feels more unified. And although it doesn't have a charging block on the package, Pixel 8 Pro can now charge up to 30 watts that provides a significant boost compared to the 23 watts of last year. And lastly, this phone together with the regular Pixel 8 will be supported for the next 7 years. I feel like for people who hold on on their phone longer, 7 years is a welcome addition even though they increase the price a little bit. In terms of performance, Pixel 8 Pro packs sensor chip Gen 3, 12GB of RAM, 128, 256, 512, and 1TB storage. The numbers are pretty good for a flagship phone, especially the bigger 12GB of RAM, and that's 150% bigger than last year. This is more than enough resources for a very snappy operation, switching between apps, cameras, and even playing games. Even the more complex editing tasks in the Photos app are processed swiftly as well. I downloaded and played Mobile Legends and it's pretty snappy. You didn't feel any hiccups on my early test. Feel like a phone on a flagship category and the game can be played on high settings. Not ultra like the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but high is good enough for a flagship phone. It has a new GPU called Immortalis G715S MC10. This is ARM's new flagship GPU designed for ultimate mobile gaming experience. I did feel overheating a bit after an hour of non-stop gaming. Not so bad but I feel that the back is a little bit hot. So for those regions with warmer temperature, you might need to be cautious about this and make sure to take breaks in between games to cool it off a bit. The triple rear camera setup got some updates including the wider apertures on both the main and the telephoto lenses and higher resolution for the ultra wide lens. There's a 50 megapixel wide camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 48 megapixel telephoto camera with 5 times optical zoom and up to 30 times digital zoom. And in every flagship smartphone, I think people always consider camera upgrade because when you buy a flagship smartphone, this kind of takes away buying another camera to shoot wherever you go. I think in a nutshell, there's two takeaways on the Pixel 8 Pro. First, they open up the pro features of the camera. Again, this is just on a software level because the regular Pixel 8 is as capable as Pixel 8 Pro without that 4 gigs of RAM. And I believe that this feature will still run on Pixel 8. But I get the point, the pro feature for the pro version. And the second takeaway is all the software features from the best take, night shots, audio eraser, magic editor, and photo unblur. And these features are running on the Google's AI camera feature that's being supported by the new Tensor Chip Gen 3. On my early test, I feel really confident about the output of Pixel 8 Pro. You got natural looking colors, but because of the HDR, it's really stunning and well balanced. And Google is also promising updates on its video performance as well in the future. So something that Pixel 8 Pro owners would look forward to. Here's a little bit of video and vlogging sample for the new Pixel 8 Pro and take a look how good the video performance is without the video upgrade they promise that is soon to come. This is the video test using the selfie camera, 4K 30fps and just looking at my face on the screen, this looks really good. Now we're using the rear camera main sensor of the Google Pixel 8 Pro and it looks really good. I just checked the video earlier uh, when I shot the front yard of our house and the colors looks nice. 
Now I'm switching to the ultra wide sensor of the Google Pixel 8 Pro. It's a little bit windy as you can see on the trees. And I don't know what it sounds like on post-production. So let me know if the audio is good on this phone. And this is the five times optical zoom. And the video quality is really good. This is the cinematic blur on Google Pixel 8 Pro. This is like mimicking proper camera with larger aperture. The design was pretty much inspired from the previous generation of Pixel and I feel like Google will bank on this kind of look for a long period of time. I think this is where Pixel phone got noticed from a bunch of Pixel phones we have from the past that look similar to either an iPhone or a Samsung phone. This year was no different, they still have this visor camera module at the back. The change was the camera module now is a bigger pill shape that again looks more unified than last year's Pixel 7 Pro. And aside from that, the back glass now has matte finish into it, so it won't accumulate a lot of finger pins, but you still have the same Gorilla Glass Victus 2 to cover both the front and the rear glasses, and aluminum frame on the side. I particularly like the finish of the aluminum frame, because on iPhone 15 Pro Max, the colors on the titanium side are just pre-painted, so it would get chipped off over time. So Pixel 8 Pro will look better as it ages compared to iPhone 15 Pro Max. Going on front of the phone, you have the 6.7 inch LTPO OLED screen with 120Hz refresh rate. And now the biggest change is they're using a flat panel for the screen and I feel like people will like it better compared to the previous generation of curved glass. The display is colorful, sharp, and smooth, hitting a max brightness of 2000 nits compared to last year's 1500 nits. This is one of those things that always annoyed me on Pixel phones. You have to squint to see the screen in direct sunlight. I didn't have this problem this time finally. Also new in this Pixel phones like Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro is the face unlock. If you recall, Pixel 4 was the only Pixel to ever have face unlock. As a secure biometric authentication, you could use it to access banking apps and other sensitive services. Now it's available again on Pixel 8 series and it works in conjunction with the in-display fingerprint sensor on pretty much any app that supports biometric authentication. One of the most important upgrades for the Pixel this year is the long-wear software support. This phone ships with the latest Android 14 and a promise of 7 years of both Android and security updates, meaning Pixel 8 Pro will be safe to use until at least October of 2030. This brings Google up to par with Apple's iPhone and best of other mainstream Android makers by at least 2 years. Only Fairphone offers more than 10 years of support. It is a big deal boosting the useful life of the phone and likely its retail value for the second and third hand market. Which will hopefully keep it in use longer, better for the wallet and the planet. Hopefully it will prompt other mainstream manufacturers to catch up. And comparing this to the regular Pixel 8 that I can hear battery issues here and there, this phone fared so much better with its larger 5050mAh cell, getting more than 5.5 hours of screen on time with some gaming mixed in but I was hoping for even longer. It can get you through a day and then some, but nothing more. They can both be recharged a little bit faster when you plug them in because of the 30 watt support and it also supports 23 watts of wireless charging with support for reverse wireless charging. I have a couple of annoyances I want to mention. First off, despite poking fun of Apple for just getting the USB-C support, these Pixel phones do not support display over USB-C, meaning nothing happens if you try to plug in into an external display. And the second one is although the battery is okay, but still with its 5000mAh, the Tensor Chip Gen 3 should be efficient enough to do all its tasks without hitting the battery life. So this is the unboxing and full review of the new Google Pixel 8 Pro. What a great time to be an Android or Pixel fanatic. I think more than ever, Pixel closes the gap, comparing all their features with other flagship phones. Yes, there may be a price hike of $100 over the last generation, but with everything it offers from the camera AI features to the Pro mode and 7 years of software support, Google Pixel 8 Pro is the best Pixel phone yet. So there you go, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll continue to compare this phone in our channel, so stay tuned. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.